Today I got four tips whether you're a first time home buyer, first time investor, flipping a property, renting a property, you better watch. Hey everyone, this is Chris Karenier. Today I got four baby steps to take, whether you're buying your first residential property to move into, buying a property to rent, buying a property to flip, whatever your goal might be when it comes to the property game. So step one, it's pretty basic, know your credit score. If you're an adult in America, there's no reason for you not to know your credit score. And realistically, it should be about 700 or higher. If it's below 700, you're gonna get absolutely hammered when it comes to interest rates, whether you're buying a car, buying a house, or anything like that. If you don't know your credit score, Go on one of the thousand websites that's free, find out what it is, and pay off old loans, pay off old credit cards, don't rack up unnecessary debt, get your credit score above 700 to get the best rate from a bank. I suggest going on mint.com, downloading the app, checking out the website, you get your entire financial statement all in one, it gives you your credit score, it gives you advice on how to increase it, it lets you know outstanding bills that are due that might be hurting your credit and all that good stuff. Mint.com. Step two, make sure you know what your budget is. Having a monthly or yearly budget is super crucial when it comes to investing or buying a property because you obviously need to know how much you can afford. If you don't know exactly how much money you make and how much money you spend every single month, it's gonna be impossible to really determine a good game plan on what your actual investment goals might be or just how much of a property you can afford. Now, if you just live on a paycheck to paycheck basis, there's no wiggle room for you to stretch that budget. If you know that you can only afford $1,000 a month for a property, then looking at properties that are $1,500 or $2,000 a month just doesn't make sense. Alternatively, if you're investing, obviously you should have a goal in mind. You should know that you wanna achieve $1,000 or $2,000 a month in income from rental properties or you wanna achieve an extra twenty dollars to $30,000 a month from flipping properties. Definitely have your budget in mind so you know a particular goal that you're reaching for. Number three, have your capital budget allocated. What I mean by that is make sure whether you're buying a property, again, for residential purposes, you have a 10% or 20% down payment. Don't rely on just a 1% down or 3% down mortgage, hoping you get 3% back in closing costs from the seller. Because realistically, you're buying a property that you can't afford. If something goes wrong, then you're gonna really be strapped for cash. And if you don't necessarily have any type of capital reserve set aside to pay for a water heater that goes or an air conditioner that blows out, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So make sure you have money set aside for not just a down payment, but also a little bit of a reserve fund and rainy day fund for when the time comes. When it comes to investing in property, never stretch. Don't look at properties that are gonna require a 20% down payment, and let's say if it's a $200,000 house, you need to come up with $40,000 plus closing costs. If you don't have that already set aside in a separate savings account, don't stretch. Uh, don't increase credit card limits like some of these real estate gurus or coaches are gonna advise you to do. Never stretch when it comes to an investment property unless you know that it's an absolute home run, and if you miss out on it, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. But other than that, if you're buying a rental property, do not stretch your budget to afford it. Do not leverage your credit card to their max of their abilities just so you can afford an investment property. It doesn't make any sense. You're gonna pay interest to the credit card companies and you're gonna be sweating every single month making sure that your rental payment comes in. And number four, I touched upon this before, have a goal in mind. If you're buying a property for the first time, obviously have a budget of $200,000 and your goal is not to go above that. You need to factor in other costs that are gonna come into play such as new furniture, closing costs, increased utility expenses, homeowners insurance, unnecessary things that are gonna come up with repairs. When it comes to investing, like I mentioned, have a budget in mind or have a goal in mind that you wanna hit for income from passive cash flow from rental properties or an ROI that you want to hit on your property flips. Nothing drives me more insane is than when somebody tells me they're going to flip a property and they just want to make $20,000. That doesn't make any sense. Is that $20,000 on a $50,000 condo, $750,000 pool home? What is it? Have a particular ROI in mind, say you're gonna make 10% net on a deal. That is your breaking point for whether or not a deal's worth it. Have a goal in mind, know your credit score, have your capital budget allocated, and make sure that you know your monthly budget to really be able to afford your house or that you can make the most of your investment property.